Heals welcomes you to the third Euro Symposium on Healthy Aging. Heals is the largest non-governmental organization in Europe promoting and advocating scientific research into longevity and biogerontology. Thanks to generous support from our sponsors, Heals was able to organize this conference. The conference will highlight the cutting edge of knowledge in the field of biogerontology and provide a unique opportunity for researchers, government officials, biotech executives and advocates from around the world to meet, network and forge new scientific collaborations. So, um, hello everybody, thank you for this uh, opportunity to present some work we have done with in silico medicine regarding the, the use of in silico method uh, and more precisely of deep neural networks and deep learning for uh, identifying uh, biomarkers which can be used for um, predicting and measuring uh, biological age. Um, so, to start with the general background, so and to understand why uh, is it so the main question is how, how can we uh, build a metric which can basically uh, in an efficient way measure uh, the age of somebody so taking into account that the, as you know the human body is basically a very complex system with a lot of components which are organized in different uh, following some kind of hierarchy, so you start from the DNA, then all the chemical reactions which occur inside the cell, then the cell can uh, combine to give some, a lot of different type of tissue, and then this tissue uh, organize themselves to give uh, the organs, and organs can combine themselves to other different type of systems which are devoted to a very specific task. So all together, they they form what we call the human body. So uh, taking this into account, it's not very really surprising that when you have a dysfunction which affects just, at last at the beginning, a, a restricted number of metabolic processes or uh, within cells or just one or more organs, this type of uh, dysfunctionalities can very quickly propagate to all parts of the cell, organs and systems, and leads uh, progressively to some kind of disruption of the general homeostasis of the, of the body. And so, um, of course, that a way to describe what aging is. So, aging is mainly a process which affects, so uh, at last, on a long-term basis, uh, most, if not all, tissue and organs of the body. Uh, and so, from this point of view, we can define, uh, from a dynamical point of view, the aging as a systemic process. And all, um, external symptoms which can observe on body uh, on the people when they age are just the apparent disparate damages of uh, more deep uh, and complex processes occurring inside the body. Uh, and so taking this into account is not really straightforward or we can um, basically uh, just measure uh, the chronic uh, what we call biological age. So. In general, as you know, when we, uh, one wants to measure any uh, biological processes or even patho pathological processes inside the body, the idea is to use a biomarker, which is a characteristic that uh, allows you to measure and evaluate uh, how well a biological processes uh, is working inside the body or how bad the pathology is uh, increasing. So most of the time, biomarkers focus on very specific uh, processes so you have a so it's not really straightforward to to see how you can build um, a measure which can take into account all the uh, different aspects of aging so if you want to to build a bio to have a biomarker for aging or let's say a set of biomarkers for aging you need uh, different things so you, you need of course uh, a quantity which you can measure easily which is easily accessible and which can also take into account the fact that aging is not just a sim single specific process, but there's a suite of changes um, which occur uh, inside all the, 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 the body. So, uh, 
as you may know, there are several biomarkers which exist. Uh, and so they can give you some information regarding the, the, the health state of the of the cyst of the body, but um, they are usually not representative of, of all uh, the different uh, part of the of the of the systems. And so also most of the times it's not really easy to have a, a good measure of them, and uh, at last without any very specific intervention. So the idea is to to, to basically build a set of biomarks of so care for aging, but uh, selected from standard clinical biomarkers, so things which can easily be, uh, you can have a very, quite a measure quite quickly. And then from this set of biomarkers, try to identify some kind of package of biomarkers you can use in a systematic way to, to obtain uh, some kind of accurate measurement. Uh, so in practice and from a more experimental point of view, the develop, developing biomarkers is a multi-step process which can be quite tedious and can, uh, can take a long time. But um, now with uh, you know, several current technological trends, uh, you, you can basically uh, try to use in silico methods uh, in order to identify biomarkers and uh, which this uh, use of in silico methods can contribute to speed up basically the development process or at last the identification of the relevant metrics you, you, you could use. So it's basically a combination of, so why is it possible now? Because as you know, you have a, 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 lot, a lot of uh, experimental data from a, a different type of data, genomic data, proteomic data, and then uh, combining with um, the progress which has been made in computational science and the availability of computational resources, you can basically design and use a, a lot of efficient algorithms and software which can help you to process this data, extract the right information from it, and then um, obtain some accurate uh, estimation of uh, the, the parameter you are interested in. So there are already a lot of techniques which are used. So essentially, uh, from inference technique to machine learning techniques. And so here I just want to focus on another type of uh, more recent techniques, so, uh, which are called deep learning methods, which are basically uh, new, more recent computational approaches that overcome several limitations of uh, previous methods, uh, including a machine learning method. So I will give some uh, example just in the next slide. But so deep, deep learning techniques uh, include what we call powerful, um, so deep architecture. So basically you have a, a deep neural networks uh, which can help you basically to, to analyze uh, any type of data. So as you can see, uh, deep learning uh, is used for predicting uh, physical or chemical properties. Uh, you can use uh, deep learning for uh, investigating structural data, chemical uh, data, or transcriptomics. And deep neural network themselves are already applied actually for modeling, uh, for example, drug target interaction when it comes to identify new, for example, uh, in the case of uh, repositioning. So when you, you want to identify new, new uh, target for a given drug. So you have several algorithms which are based on uh, deep neural networks. And um, also uh, regarding uh, when it comes to also investi uh, investigation of toxic, uh, toxicity issue, so deep neural uh, based approach can be um, also very effective. So, um, so here, for example, uh, the idea was to start from the, ini so for the initial data, which has been chosen, is uh, come from a blood biochemistry test. Uh, which is one of the most uh, simplest tests used uh, in total life. So uh, the marker which uh, you can find in blood chemistry tests are sensitive uh, to a lot of various conditions. So you can extract a, a lot of different information regarding uh, the health status of somebody. Uh, and so also blood biochemistry tests are approved for clinical use. So uh, it's. Uh, so, so how it works in practice, this kind of pipeline to, to uh, in silico pipeline. So you start from your data, which is basically uh, ten of thousands of samples. So um, 
and each of them contain uh, 46 blood test markers. So of, you, of course, because you can have people, as you know, you have a big difference between, so you have biological age on one side and then you have chrono chronological age on, on, those, on the other side. And you know that the biological age is what you are going to measure when you are using blood chemistry tests, for example. And depending on the people, you can have people who look younger than they actually are or older. So, so basically you need to do some pre-processing to, to select data which, uh, for, uh, for example, uh, you, you avoid people who have very uh, specific disease, for example. And then the idea is to use this set of uh, no, normalized markers uh, to, to feed basically the deep neural network itself. Uh, which is basically composed of several uh, layers of neurons. And the, the idea is that um, if you compare to other methods which uh, use more uh, linear regression models, for example, the idea behind uh, deep neural networks is that the, each node is activated using a, a, a nonlinear function. And this nonlinearity allows uh, the model to basically uh, combine all the features of the data in a more uh, precise way, and so you, you are able to extract more information from the same set of data. And so, when you have this, of course, for any as for any type of uh, in silico method, you use several metrics which can help you to assess the reliability, reliability of the result, accuracy, and also several uh, metrics related to the performance of the algorithm. So, um, so of course, because um, when you use a deep neural network, so the main uh, issue is that you have a lot of parameters, so you need to train the network on a, a subset of your data, and then also you need to vali uh, validate the network. So when, once you have uh, obtained the right value for your hyperparameter, you still need to, to check if this model is able to generalize, basically, uh, on a new set of uh, data. And so here, basically, the idea is to so, so make a co see what type of correlation you have between uh, the predicted value of age, which is basically the biological age, and the actual value of age, which is in that case uh, the chronological age. So obviously you have a correlation between both, but you need to take into account, as I said, that of course, depending on the health status of the people, uh, biological age and, predict, uh, and uh, chrono chronological age can vary. And uh, so, so also what is interesting is that um, so the most efficient uh, deep neural network which, which, can be, uh, which has been built uh, basically uh, perform uh, better than all other methods which has been published in the past. So it's quite interesting. So a uh, second thing which can be uh, interesting to do in that case is that because you have uh, 41 uh, different biomarkers in your blood, uh, chemistry test. The idea is to see, uh, to, to check uh, what set of, is it possible, for example, to, to define uh, some kind of subset of biomarkers uh, with, uh, which is um, smaller than 46 and still enough to have a, a good result with a good accuracy. So basically the idea is to make um, some importance and uh, so to rank basically all the biomarkers. And so you have two interesting things. The first thing is that um, the, the result uh, which has been obtained show that basically the, the performance of the deep neural networks basically uh, wh when you decrease the number of uh, uh, measurements which are available remain more uh, stable even with basically if you just have the 10 top uh, markers. And um, for example the, the five uh, first markers which has been uh, obtained, so using this uh, method, so are quite related to well-known uh, uh, process. So you have the albumin, uh, glucose, alkaline phosphatase, uh, erythrocyte, and urea. Both of them are, you know, uh, involved in, um, so for example, erythrocyte, which is um, damaged by uh, oxidative stress, and oxidative stress, as everybody knows, is a, a main um, cause of aging. Uh, the glucose, which is uh, linked to the metabolic health, and so usually aging process is uh, also 
uh, characterized by uh, insulin resistance, for example. Um, and obviously, all these uh, markers are themselves related to uh, key systems which are associated uh, at one point or another with aging. So you have the renal system, liver system, metabolic system, and respiratory system uh, or function. So um, if you want to try basically the, um, this uh, deep neural network which has been uh, implemented is available so on the website so you can uh, provide your own blood test result. And uh, this system will basically uh, uh, suggest you uh, basic, uh, your age with respect to your, the, the, the type of marker you can provide. And so the, the idea, of course, is that the, the deep neural networks are able basically to... Um, to, to so the, the, the idea is that basically it should be interesting to expand this uh, first analysis by combining different types of sources because actually deep neural networks are quite well uh, done for this type of uh, improvement. And then also, of course, um, uh, and that's uh, a point which has been raised uh, previously. So if you want to have accurate results, um, uh, it should be also interesting to, to take into account that basically the aging rates, for example, uh, depend also from, from uh, you know, the environment where the people live. So basically, you, you can have different aging rates depending on the country you live and some genetic and environment determinants uh, may also differ from countries and including culture. Uh, and so, um, you basically, uh, it's very unlikely that it's possible to have just a one single algorithm for all population of sex uh, on, on, uh, on this planet. So, what is going to, to be done probably is that you will have uh, algorithms which, which will be uh, population specific in the near future. And so, so of course, it's also interesting to develop the similar algorithm for uh, other type of organism uh, and see how, how basically the kind of information you can obtain by um, uh, investigating basically uh, the aging uh, and aging process and also um, biomarker you can identify for different type of species, for example. And as I said previously, it's also a good uh, tool which allow you to analyze uh, the relationship between chronological and biological aging, which can vary, which has basically two different meaning and can vary more or less strongly depending on the species uh, and the sta health state of the, uh, of the individual. So I thank you for your attention. So we have time for one quick question. Um, what do you think about the use uh, of longitudinal studies to assess the robustness over time of a biomarker, first? And second, the fact that in uh, some cases, in order to really validate a biomarker, you need uh, to assess uh, how much it predicts morbidity and mortality uh, which is not so easy to assess. So, uh, do you think that in order to have a more robust biomarker, you need this data or...? Uh, so, so, so the fact is... Longitudinal data and, uh, and the prediction of morbidity and mortality. Um, I, I, the, the fact is here... Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure I uh, really understand the question. So, so, so the idea is that if we are able to combine more data, so here is basically a, a preliminary pre pre uh, pre uh, uh, step. So, so we will be able to produce a more accurate and uh, stable result, which could be used for, for example, um, um, uh, have a general uh, pattern regarding, you know, uh, evolution of the morbidity and uh, mortality curve. So for uh, a, a complete set of, fin, different type of population, 
that's for sure. Here's a fact is that the, uh, I think there could be some BS in the basil because uh, all, basically all the data come from um, so uh, clinics which are in, in Russia actually. So maybe, for example, you do not have a very uh, a lot of variation with respect to the uh, maybe genetical background of the of the people which has provided uh, this blood result. So maybe that's why I said um, if you are able to to obtain uh, data from different uh, type of population with different type of culture, you can uh, make some more systematic and precise analysis of all this uh, mortality and morbidity pattern. For, uh, which will be then p p specific to each type of population. And from that, using the same data, you can also uh, identify, um, as I'm basically, maybe the, the relative importance of the biomarker could vary depending on the background of the, of the people. But that's uh, something which uh, is currently uh, under investigation. I mean, so. so, thank you. So, again, thank you, Dr. Van Halen. Thank you.